welcome all the dignitaries onto the dais. I request the dignitaries on and off the dais to kindly stand up for the rendition of the national anthem. <laughs>
His other facet of his character is that he is a human being of sterling qualities. He was going to Balasaur in an official visit. He meandered into a village in Jaipur, Jajpur, sorry, and go, went into a lady's home called Sagarika. Incidentally, she happened to be a nurse in the government house. This is Ganesh Malaji. What more can I introduce? <laughs> Justice Gowda has been with us for long many years. That is a harbinger of the poor and downtrodden. Everyone in the Karnataka High Court, Odisha High Court and in the Supreme Court knows. His recent stand on the NEP, Quay, the Tamil Nadu government, was stupendous. He, he categorically said Article 246, federal structure, makes this unconstitutional. To compel something in a country which is having innumerable religion, language and culture. That's just as Gauda for you. Dr. Mulvida is a spinner of sorts. When I was coming in, Justice Gauda told that he is a very good cricketer, that I, I thought to myself that when I shifted to Delhi, I wanted to be recognized as a lawyer. There I was recognized as a cricketer. When I was in the peak of my career and attempting to be a cricketer, I didn't get any recognition. So both ways I lost. So therefore, whether it's a compliment or an insult, I don't know. But I'll take it as a compliment. When I was in the Delhi High Court most recently, I have been in the Delhi High Court innumerable times. I have had the occasion to appear before this was the ramrod straight, sterling qualities of head and heart. And even today if I went and argued a matter of a, of a tax matter or an arbitration or a violence of a statute or Article 226, I cannot but stumble into a judgment which is the leading judgment on that line in the Delhi High Court. He is amiable. He has done something in Orissa which most of us forgot to think of. He went into the districts and picked up talent, young lawyers, below a certain year of, I think it's seven years, I don't know, I stand correctly, 13 to 14 years and then made a set of people to be recognized and to be recognized there so that they come into the mainstream. Probably he thought enough of Katak and High Court to be the only place where talent is there. It's a matter of time those people will come and come into the limelight here also. The greatest part of this man is that he has no, he sees he's either black or white, the grey almost doesn't exist and uh, therefore it sometimes becomes very difficult for him to compromise in situations and he'll go any length to stick to his stand and that's Dr. Mujhidhar for you. Thank you very much. I welcome them all. I also welcome the district administration and the police, honorable judges of the High Court sitting and retired, the members of the print and the, the what, what are the media, I forget the name. <laughs> so, I welcome them here. I thank the hotel who has made a very good arrangement and with that I welcome all of you to this gathering.
Thank you ever so much. Thank you, sir. I have requested the interest on and off the dais to kindly watch the display screens. Mr. Jayant Das was born on 11th July 1943 at Qatar to late Justice Navakumar Das and eminent social worker Prabhamai Devi. He pursued his education from Ravenshah College at School, Qatar. He did his BA Honours Economics at the prestigious St. Stephen's College. He was a regular columnist in the Statesman and the Hindustan Times. It was also here that he met Saru the love of his life. During his student career, he represented India in the International Youth Conference in Malaysia, along with Sri Gopal Krishna Gandhi, Gopu, as he fondly addressed him. He was also closely associated with Rajaji in his student career. He was the founder editor of University Review, the Delhi University fortnightly, and was also secretary of debates in the Union Cabinet of St. Stephen's College. He was mentored under the pupillage of eminent economists like Dr. Amartya Sen, Dr. Manmohan Singh, Sri Sukumoy Chakrabarti at the Delhi School of Economics. Following which, Sri Das went on to join the civil services in 1966. Sri Das joined Indian Audit and Accounts Service in 1966 he was the topper of his batch. He handled important assignments in program and economic evaluation. He was posted in as first secretary in the High Commission of India at London, overseeing financial and economic matters of 26 Indian diplomatic missions from Ireland to Moscow. He handled the entire armament procurement for the Bangladesh Liberation Movement and was honoured by the government of Bangladesh for his contribution to the Mukti Bahini and liberation of Bangladesh. During this period, he qualified at the Lincoln's Inn as a barrister with the blessings of Lord Denning, master of the bench. On his return to India, he handled financial reforms of erstwhile post and telegraph organisation. In view of Bar having been de-recognised in India, he completed his LLB with a first class first gold medal from Uttal University with the award of the Madhusudan Gold Medal. He was closely associated with late Mr. Ram Jait Milani, senior advocate, late barrister Ranjit Mahanti, who went on to be one of the founding members of the National Law School, Bangalore. He was also closely associated to Sri B.K. Mahanti, advocate general who later went on to be a part of the core committee to set up the National Law University at Katak. These eminent people and his own father ultimately inspired and motivated him to pursue law and become a member of the bar. He resigned from government service in 1979 to join the bar. He set up the first prominent law firm of Orissa, Das & Associates, Advocate and Consultants reading in the chambers with his younger brother, senior advocate Yasupan Das and Tale Hafiz. He was mentored in practice by senior advocate and former Attorney General Sri G. Ramaswamy and Sri Soli Sorabji. He rose to great heights swiftly and within 13 years of practice, he was designated as a senior counsel in the year 1993. He took a leadership role in espousing public cause to PIL and in the status of amicus curiae. Leading among such cases were the liquor tragedy case, starvation death in KBK districts, illegal land acquisition of Vedanta University and KBK Nilachal power plant case. He was appointed the Advocate General of Odisha in 1999 and handled the famous Gramstein's Murder Commission. He was the President of the High Court Bar Association in the year 2012-13. He was instrumental in several developmental activities for the bar. 
air conditioning of the Odisha High Court Bar Association, modernization of the library, availability of free SSC and AIR online for lawyers. He was a man who never knew fear. He often quoted the famous lines of Gurudev Rabindranath Tagore, Jodi tor dakshine ke na ashe to be ekla cholo re. He stood firmly on his morals and principles and never compromised on them. A man who embodied nobility in the profession of law and rose to national heights in a short unparalleled span of time. He was active till the last week of his life and appeared in matters effectively. He succumbed to massive cardiac arrest on 25th June 2021 in the arms of his son Aditya. Despite COVID restrictions, a sea of people descended at his residence in Bhubaneswar and accompanied him in his last journey. Great grandson of Utkalmani Pandit Gopavandhu Das and son of late Justice Nabakumar Das. His wife Sarita continued in the IAS to become a secretary to the government of India. His son Aditya Narayan and daughter-in-law Eva are also young and active members of the bar. His daughter Amrita is a journalist working out of Amsterdam and his grandson Aryaman is pursuing his computer science degree from University of California. His Excellency, the Governor of Odisha, Sri Ganesh Lalji, my good friend, very famous Chief Justice of uh, Odisha High Court, Dr. Mulida. Senior Council, Yashavan Sudas, respected my brother and sister judges of Orissa High Court, former Chief Justice and judges of Orissa High Court, most respected Senior Council of Orissa Bar Association and Bhuneswar. My loved and affectionate young members of the bar, family members of Jayant Das, Aditya Das, friends from print made in the electronic media, respected invitees. Ladies and gentlemen, I leave it up to my declaration. When I debited the office of Chief Justice, travelled to Delhi, I made a statement that my second hometown is Katak and Bhuneshwar. Due to Corona period, due to Corona, I was unable to travel here for the last two and a half years. I am very happy to be in your midst. Each one of you I know, I remember and you are in my heart. I will be always telling, wherever I travel, including the Bangalore city, Varissa Bar Association and the High Court Judges of Varissa High Court are responsible for the evolution of law right from Binapani case 1969. That is the great contribution. <laughs> My dear friends, today we have assembled here 
to pay our rich tributes to a versatile veteran a statesman quality lawyer born from Katak Bar Association Mr Jayant Das is no more with us he is a great lawyer he had an excellent career both as a diplomat as an officer of indian india dealing with economic affairs then he changed over to the legal fraternity he completed his law he started his practice he is a original thinker great quality of analyzing the fact situation in a case and applying the law i had the privilege and benefit of this great soul when i was the chief justice of our sahi court in number of matters i received the valuable argument changed my thinking by interpreting the constitutional provisions mining act land acquisition act environmental law what not he used to address the arguments where any judge on the bench should listen to him and he used to make the judges to understand what is the case involved in that particular the case i had the benefit of his assistance as a senior lawyer sometimes i remember distinctly remember ashok mahanti the then advocate general who was present he argued some important matters which public interest is involved i have forgotten those two cases i remember the court case vedanta's case land acquisition eminent domain power lord jagannath land has been acquired state government thousands of acres of land just like that given to the 8000 acres of land to vedanta university at puri public trust domain public trust concept was uh, argued i wrote the judgment the judgment is pending in supreme court i don't want to discuss about that any case for that matter jayant das the senior lawyer used to render human assistance to the judges on the bench particularly to me i remember him forever i got myself educated as a chief justice presiding over the bench i always tell the young members of the bar and the bench that we are being educated by the lawyers i always tell the law the judges we must have patience to listen to the lawyers who prepare their brief this is what i practiced it for 19 and a half years i delivered the justice to the people the two aspects judge can render judgment judge can render justice all judgments are not justice oriented i am very happy to be in your midst and among 
His Excellency the Governor and my best friend, Chief, Chief, Chief Justice. I am very, very happy when he was appointed and transferred to what is such High Court. I was happy because judge like Justice Mullidhar and persons who have a commitment to the people of this country, particularly across two rivers, the huts, the people who live, to remember them, to render service to the people, that kind of judges were required in this Varisha High Court. My dear friends, Jain Das may not be amongst us, but Jain Das, legacy of advocacy, I hope and trust his son Aditya Das will carry forward. I also appeal to young members of the bar that the great lawyers in Varissa High Court, not necessarily the designated senior lawyers, non-designated lawyers, number of lawyers I have seen, not only in Katak, Bhuvaneshwar, across the Odisha state I travelled. I am very happy. The Chief Justice told me that he is also travelling across the Odisha state. It is a good sign. Our junior members are good. They must have the great exposure. I was discussing with the Chief Justice. Memorandum of Association appointment mandates seven and a half lakhs income to recommend a candidate. That is not possible in Varissa state at all. Not at all. This is what I took up the case. I don't want to name the judges. Once it was written, within Four months I travelled to Delhi, sought appointment with the Chief Justice. I carried the files. I explained to the Chief Justice. I told them the nature of cases, nature of litigate. Of course, major industrialists in the mining area, few lawyers will be engaged. The mass of lawyers are very poor sections of the society here. So, such kind of young members of the bar cases were also briefed in the corridor to Jayant Das. I am aware of it. He used to be briefed there, he used to come there and argue the case. I wanted to emulate the other young members of the bar and senior members of the bar. It is your responsibility to shoulder the responsibility of the young members of the bar. I am aware that uh, sometimes very inconvenient for the senior lawyers to enter into the bar association, stop their thinking not to go and boycott the courts. I know that. I am aware of it. Nonetheless, the lawyers, senior lawyers, there are all senior lawyers in this bar, like Jayant Das to take all the young members of the bar into confidence and see that the institutional interest is protected, the people's interest is protected. You are the guardians of the constitution, you are protectors of the rule of law. Each one of you can contribute a lot. More particularly, the present day situation. But for the two constitutional functionaries who are on the dais, I would have spoken something else, but it may not be proper for me to speak out what is in my mind. But nonetheless, 75th year of independence we are celebrating this month. Great onerous responsibility is on us. 
we always remember Jai Hind Das. I appeal the young members of the bar, please follow his footsteps. If you do that, you will be paying rich tributes to the veteran, versatile Jai Hind Das. Thank you very much. It's not proper for me. In a function where His Excellency the Governor is there, minute to minute program, I am aware of it. I am a very lengthy speaker. Whatever I wanted to speak, I have to speak. But I must also be aware, I have got three page the speech. I am a very bad speaker if I read out the written speech. Whatever it occurred to me from my bottom of my heart, I will speak. This is what I have spoken. We all will, from our bottom of our hearts, pay rich tributes to the great soul today in this function. Always I remember him. I remember this part. I remember the people of uh, this state always and my brother and sister teachers on the bench. I wish them well, do well, render justice, social, economic and political justice to the needy, oppressed, suppressed, the exploited sections of the society. That's what has been very effectively being tried, tried by my brother Judge Chief Justice Mullidhar. He has taken up the project of scavengers, leprosy. What I could not do, he is doing it. I wish him well. I want your unstinted support to the Chief Justice to deliver goods to the people of this state. Thank you very much. Uh, I must give my special thanks to Aditya Das and the committee who invited me to this very memorable, meaningful function. Thank you very much. simple 
simplicity. No airs about the man at all, but a great depth of learning. You could see that in this very webinar. He wore his learning very lightly. He spoke very gently. And as Justice Gopala Gauda was mentioning, he spoke very effectively. It must have been a great pleasure for judges to listen to him. As a colleague in the bar, you watch lawyers from the side, but when you sit on the bench and you listen to lawyers, it impacts you very differently. Sri Jayanta Das was able to persuade judges to see the point of view he was putting across and had all the qualities of a very great lawyer. I think what marks out the senior lawyers is their ability to handle very difficult cases, handle very ticklish moments in the court. This I learned from my own senior, my guru, Sri Ramaswamy, G. Ramaswamy, the former attorney general for India, who is also a very close associate and a contemporary of Sri Jayanta Das. He used to always tell me what marks you out as a good lawyer is your ability to handle difficult cases. Good cases, easy points to argue, can be put across, but it's like getting out on a full toss in cricket. Sometimes you think it's an easy ball to play, but you could get out. But the tricky googly or an in-swinger or a reverse swing ball, these are the things that you need to handle carefully, but you have to have a very balanced state of mind. What marks up these senior lawyers is their calm and composure within themselves. That's very important. In fact, as judges, I can say this with some confidence and Sri Gopal Gauda will also agree with me. We are sometimes surprised when senior lawyers lose their composure. We expect senior lawyers to maintain their composure and calm while in court. That's what makes us listen to those senior lawyers very attentively. But it's not an easy task always depending on who your opponent is, what his state of mind is, but the ability to maintain your inner equanimity, irrespective of the case, and communicate to the judge that this is an important point to be listened to. I think that is what marks out a good lawyer. And when it is there, the senior lawyer, it's even better because it comes with a wealth of experience. As, as a young lawyer in the bar, I've often wondered what, what is so special about the senior lawyer. I argue the same point, he argues the same point, the judges listen to him more carefully, the judges don't listen to me as carefully. I'm sure many a young member of the bar here has felt that. What is so special? I'm after all arguing the same point. And I've said this before also, and uh, this is something I learned from my senior. The analogy I wish to draw is with music. There are musicians of various classes, categories, junior singers, senior singers, vidwans, vidushis. When you hear the same rag delineated by the young singer who is very competent, very able, very knowledgeable, has followed the path very carefully, has imbibed all the best practices, is singing the same rag, and then the senior performs the same rag, you know sitting in the audience that it is qualitatively different. What is different? It's after all the same rag, the same note. It is different because there is something called a bhava. In music, there is something called bhava, an emotion. What you communicate is your life's experience. So when you argue a difficult case, you are placing yourself in the position of a client who has a difficult case, you try and communicate a certain emotion to the court. This is on top of your knowledge of the facts, your knowledge of the law, your knowledge of the judge whom you are addressing. It's above all that. That is that special quality. Some people have it within them. There are some prodigies in singing. They may be very young. I don't know how many of you have heard Kumar Gandharva sing when he was just four years old. It's available on the net. You would be struck 
at such a young age with that childlike voice, the kind of bigas that he could make, bring it to music. Only great Vidwans could do it. So there are those prodigies even among the bar. But by and large, these kind of qualities you develop over a period of life. You yourself in your life undergo certain experiences that teaches you more about life. When you grow with those experiences, as a musician, as a lawyer, it communicates itself through what you say and how you say it. And it communicates in a very different way to the judge listening to your case because we are able to catch hold of that emotion. That is what marks out the senior lawyer from the non-senior lawyer. Senior not because of designation. I want to make the, put a caveat here. Not every lawyer who is wearing a gown automatically becomes capable of commanding respect as a senior lawyer. It is what you say in court, how you present the case, how you communicate the, your knowledge of the law and where you want the judges to go with it, understanding the mood of the judges, the stage of the case. There are so many factors that you have to take into mind. It's only a senior lawyer with that kind of experience of knowing the bar, knowing the judges, knowing the law that can steer the case to its destination. That is why they command respect. A senior lawyer, or for that matter, any lawyer who demands respect is not going to get it. He has to command respect. He has to command respect not just from the judges on the bench, but from the peers, from lawyers. So lawyers know other lawyers. Somebody asked me, sir, how do you find out who is a good lawyer? One easy way of doing it is going to the bar. You ask in the bar, like you become a decoy, you ask in the bar, who is a lawyer you can trust? Every lawyer will not say, sir, you can trust all the lawyers here. They will actually name a few lawyers you can trust. How does that happen? Because lawyers know lawyers, lawyers argue against lawyers. They know how many of those arguments can actually be taken on face value, how many of those arguments you have to be very careful when you accept those arguments. So lawyers develop reputations. This is a very closed society in one sense. A lawyer gets exposed immediately because a lawyer performs in public. Likewise, judges get exposed. Judges perform in public. Judges are watched all the time. It is only seasoned lawyers who understand all of this and irrespective of the case will know that there is a certain line they should not cross. They should not take any judge for granted. They should not take any opponent for granted. I have seen many a senior lawyer get tripped up by a very junior lawyer who is better prepared with the facts, better prepared with the law. A good senior lawyer, and this is a quality I found with Sri Jayant Das, a good senior lawyer will never take anything for granted, will never try to talk down to his opponent. The opponent des deserves as much respect as you expect to be respected. He may be very well prepared in the case, you may not be so well prepared in the case. The senior lawyer therefore, who commands respect, commands respect not only from the judges, but from his peers, that is other senior lawyers, but most importantly from the younger colleagues in the bar. They are the exemplars of good practices. And we need more Mr. Jain classes in the bar not just in Orissa, but in all over India. But this is a rich tradition that the Orissa Bar has. In the last one and a half years, I have had the pleasure of listening to several senior advocates who have reminded me and who reminded all of us why this bar is a good bar, is a great bar, is a potential to grow into an even better bar. There are many young lawyers, and I would assure Justice Gopal Gauta, there are very many young lawyers in the Orissa Bar today who give a great hope Many of them are well prepared, many of them are able to present their cases well and as Sri Jashubindra Das was pointing out, the idea of reaching out to the district bar was also that, that we must acknowledge that within every bar association, there is a young lawyer who has got ideals, who has got values, who believes in doing professionally a good job, who believes that the client must get justice, who believes that truth must prevail in the court. There are many such lawyers. We should not use the same brush to say, oh, the bar is this deteriorating. I won't believe that. 
I am not a person who means that at all. I believe every bar has a group of lawyers who want to take that bar forward, who want to instill some values for the next generation to follow. All the senior lawyers here, I would only urge this, that these values that we have, the good values that we have, the kind of lawyers that we've had, like Sri Jayantadas, those values that mark them out, that make them special in the bar, those are the values we must promote, we must encourage, we must nurture. I would also end this uh, speech of mine with one appeal to the senior lawyers to come forward to strengthen the legal aid movement. The involvement of senior lawyers in the legal aid movement is very important. It's something that we have not really paid much attention to. Invariably, the panel of legal aid lawyers that we have, whether it's in the high court or the district courts, are of lawyers with not as much experience as is needed to handle sensitive cases. So the more and more senior lawyers participate in legal aid cases, come forward to do cases pro bono, not all cases, once in a while, it will raise the quality of justice. The same concern expressed by Justice Gopalagota. We need that kind of assistance from the bar, from the senior bar. And I am sure the Orissa senior bar will not be founding, want, want, found wanting in that. Thank you for a patient listening. Thank you to the family of Sri Jayanta Das for inviting me to this very wonderful function. And congratulations on that occupation you beautifully put together. Jay. It's a proud and historic moment for me to present my humble salutations to Honorable Chief Justice of High Court of Odisha, Dr. Justice S. Murli Dhaji, formerly Chief Justice of High Court of Odisha, Honorable Justice V. Gopitra Kabraji, the Senior Most Counsel, Honorable Shri Yashwantaji, in the light of the Divine Light of Father, India, accept my humble salutations. Well, as far as uh, I observe, Divine, the Truth, Vidharma, the Constitution. You are the Valentine of that divine. May the divine constitution be your Valentine also. That is what this subject is. The greatness of a country or of a state does not depend upon the victory of a political party. Similarly, the greatness of an individual also does not depend upon the office, however so big it may be. Well, that does not depend upon that. It depends upon the union of the souls. It depends upon the responsive truth and manifesting the truth around it. All the doctrines which have been enshrined in the sacred church by the sages, the seers, and the saints of the Lord Buddha, we be Bhagavatam, we be Gita, Puran, Bible, Granth Sahib, etc. And all the rules and principles which have been so constituted, and all the arrangements which have been so formulated for a smooth interaction between the man and the society, the society and the nature, and the nature and the divine, a harmonious order among man, science, nature and God. Fallen under the ambit of constitution, you can say, bliss, you can say, truth, you can say, atom, you can say, you name anything that fall under this thing, truth, you can say. Constitution, you can say. 
you are the custodians, the mentors, the preservers, the dispensers of the prestige of India, the honor of India. That is that. But what is this truth, you see? Well, as far as uh, I have learned from you, from this place, from the land of this place, truth is the heart of the chief justice, of the chief justices of the universe, you see. Therefore, legally right may not, it must be morally right also. And the empire cannot afford the luxury to become a player. So therefore, what is that, you see? What is that truth? It's a compassion. It's a fraternity. It is the dignity of the individual. It's a unifying force, you see. It is the spirit of equal and one. It is the spirit that there is no distinction, no discrimination between the common and the cosmos. Meri jati manushya hai. Mera dharma manavata hai. Mera desha kil vishwa hai. Mera shashat prabhu jagannar ke liye, constitution ke liye, jo aata hai. So this truth is uh, Basically, virtually, it is the synchronized spirit, full of fragrance, melody, and sweetness. It is the psychic perfection which smiles at everything. You see. No authority, no, no authority, no dominance, no hierarchy, no divisiveness, inconceivable oneness and difference. That is what Chaitanya says, you see. Achintya, Hedati. Can't afford that. So as far as truth is concerned, see, that took that constitution, that banner you are upholding. And as far as uh, should I speak that it is nothing else but the undifferentiated and unabridged uh, the power of her? Should I speak that? Uh, this is nothing else but visible heights and invisible delights. Should I say that the constitution, the truth, that is nothing, no other than even that the Vujananatha Should I say that it is radiating happiness, radiating consciousness and radiating immortality? So that is what the truth is. In the words of a spiritual teacher, I can speak, you see, like that, you see, na toham kama ye rajyam, na swargam, na punarbhavam, kama ye dukha taptana, pranina maatra nasha. Neither birth, nor pair power, nor rebirth, nor heaven, you see. I don't wish, don't aspire, don't covet, you see, no ambition. And my ambition is all the sufferings, the agonies, and the anguishes, all the dilemmas, doubts, desperations, the depressions, the distresses, the fever, the threats, and the fumes, the sufferings of those you put in my pocket, you see, put in my coffin. That is what the Constitution says. I am here only for that. It is what Granthi Deva says. It is what the Constitution also says. And the upholders of the Constitution, it is expected out of them that it should be. It is what the philosophy, as far as I learn, you see, the Constitution is. Celebrations are of two kinds. Celebration is the nature of the spirit. And spirituality is the harmonious blend of outer silence. Inner celebrations. Outer celebrations, inner silence. As far as outer celebration and inner silence is concerned, that is a purified soul, you see, that descends upon the earth 
to deliver the poison to an heretic being. The miscreants, yada 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 when there is a complete decline of righteousness and the natural system has been pushed to a brink of total collapse and the planet fears that it will not be living no longer, you see, then he says that I descend upon this earth. But that is a purified soul, you see. And the other thing is this when there is a Inner, cell, uh, inner silence and outer celebration, then giant katas, be surrender sana, utkal mani, utkal gaura, utkal pancha saka, be surrender sana, gaha, etc. All these great personalities are great souls. This land is basically the choices place of the great souls. They are to be trained, they are to be transformed into purified souls. What is a great soul and what is a purified soul after all? If you pass through, a blooming flower, you experience the ecstasy. Well, that is a great soul. But you become the fragrance itself, that becomes a purified soul. By their examples, by their conduct, these great personalities like Jayanta Das, you see, they have been marching ahead and barking on a journey from egocentrism to geocentrism, from sense gratification to Self-realization from awakening and collaboration, from abstaining and sustaining. Well, that is the characteristic. Dissolving oneself in the soundless silence of that divine. Therefore, Lord Krishna speaks to Arjuna also. Yatya dan kapaha karma, natyajyam kare neva tatta, yatya dan natapascheva, pamana nima nishina. Sacrifice of charity and austerities are never to be relinquished. They are not to be renounced. But they pure, purify the great souls to purify, to purify the souls. You see, great souls to purify the souls. That is what for Krishna is. And what is yajja after? It is performing the prescribed duties. I never adjusted. I don't adjust. And I will never adjust. That is what yajja is. The divine is always couched, situated in the sacrifice. Without that sacrifice, nothing can be done. It is what our Krishna speaks. What is dana after she, the teacher? You never existed, you see. If I exist, you see. I am just there, you see, to obey His will, fidelity for His work, absolute surrender to to the Divine, you see, just only through Him, for Him, in the service of Him, and by becoming the Divine, that is what Dana is. And austerity simply means that the client or the person who comes to me, whether in the shape of a witness or whether in the shape of a plus or minus, whosoever comes to me, I am in you as you. You are in me as means. It is what a judge is, you see, but that is what I think. So as far as uh, the verified soul is concerned, my constitution, the constitution of my country, living God, as you see, speaks that, you see, I stand unique in the world. I am unique. I was I will always remain unique that that is what the constitution of my country. I am very much honored this small part of this land, you see, which has the power to, ex to exonerate, to liberate, to save, to deliver you from all the sinful reactions for the last 2000 years. I am thankful to our victim that he has given me an opportunity to seek your blessing. One day of the Bharat Mahatma. Much obliged to His Excellency. On behalf of the Foundation, we would like to present mementos to the families of the Dyers. As a 
mark of respect and love. I request Ankita Kuran and Chinmay Lotrai to come from the dais to deliver the mentors. Thank you. 